All right, Shalom, all glorification, honor, and praise is going out to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakwadas. Double honors, as always, is due to the venerable apostles of the Great Millstone, along with the bishops and elders who rule and teach the church well, and that's what they do. Salutations to you, Akim, out there, laboring on the four corners of the earth, preaching, teaching, and prophesying the right way, waking up the lost sheep of the house of Israel. On down to all those among Israel, all right, Yasharala, who have to leave their report, the men, women, and children, believers, they too are going to be delivered out of this coming destruction. I'm Shamar Amath, uh, back with a slight response video, okay, to the video on the screen right here, put up by the Elder Apostle Gobar, all right, page is Daily Edification 4, subscribe, of course, if you have not already done so. And he did this video, and I'm, a, I'm I'm actually 41 minutes into it, so I haven't even finished the whole video. It's 20 more minutes left. Um, he did a he did a response, but anyway, you see the title. Can I have fun in the truth? He was responding to um this video put up by the priest Amawan Gabar, GMS Awakening 144. Obviously, subscribe. Okay. Um, he put up this video. <laughs> Um, the majority of our people are about to fucking die. Who, whose people? The, the the majority of the Lord's people, man. All right, the majority of Yahweh Bashem Yahshua's people, which is you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Okay, along with you speckled birds, man. You Israelite foreigners. All right, the majority of our people are about to fucking die. But can we have fun in this truth? Now, it basically. It centers around some comments made by some guys from the ISUPK, which that group is completely off. They are way, way out of there, man. Gone. And um, again, this is just going to be, uh, let's get back to where I, video, let's see. This is just going to be a, um, Even, um, a slight response. All right. Commentary. Um, to this video, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna uh, regurgitate the same scriptures that I've heard the apostle bring out so far, but no, nah, man, you know, now of course, being in the flesh, okay, the Lord uh, provides us moments, you know, throughout the week where we can laugh a little bit, you know, from time to time, of course, all right, but as, but on, but on, but on the whole, man, all right, the majority of our time, you know, those of us who have been called to do this work. The majority of our time we spend being pissed the fuck off, you know, it's being surrounded by kind of like Lot, you know, Lot out there in, you know, in the, in, the, in the ancient world out there in Sodom and Gomorrah, right? San Francisco, Sodom, Francisco, <laughs> right? He, he was, he was, uh, uh, he wasn't out there having a good old time, man, yucking it up, you know, laughing, enjoying, you know, making mirth. What was, what is what does it say about Lot? It says he was vexed. Hold on. It says he was vexed. I had a um, I had pulled that definition up. Let me see. Yeah, I got it right here. He was vexed, man, and I'm gonna read it. But a lot of our time is spent being vexed, man. Okay. Um vexed as an adjective okay look at definition number two all right annoyed right this society is annoying man being in babylon the great being around all these damn heathens being around esau being around the two-thirds is fucking annoying all right it's frustrating okay it makes you it, it gets you irritated it, it, <laughs> we get mad right exasperated okay Upset, aggravated. <laughs> All these uh, similar words, right? Insist. It's infuriating, man. This society is infuriating. Okay? All the, uh, the agendas pushed over here by Esau. All right, beginning with his elites, the wicked elites of Esau and Amalek, the, 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 the international banking families. You know, you know, pushing feminism on our people, pushing... The, the the alphabet lifestyle on our people. Okay, pushing bread and circus. You know, uh, uh, forwarding uh, folly. 
And we got to walk around and, and, and deal with it every day. Some men out here doing this work, like myself, have to, have to answer to females in the, in the workplace for, for, for fuck's sake. Pardon my French. Okay? That's vexing. You know? Having to answer to a female? You know? Um, so let's, let's get that where, you know, lot. Well, let's see. Vexed. With the filthy conversation of the wicked. Seeing these people, man, watching the way they live, at, you know, or uh, uh, be, uh, oh, oh man, you know, it's, it's frustrating. Second Peter 2 and verse 7. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 7. And delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Okay? For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Right. Meaning Sodom and Gomorrah, man. He was around all that perversion. The same way we are, <clears throat> Salaki, the same way we are today in spiritual Sodom. Okay. We're, we're vexed from day to day with these people's unlawful deeds, man. You know, we have in the wise Esau being the most lawless creature being the most lawless creature that, that the Lord made, you know, we have, we have to see his stupidity and his wickedness. And we have to deal with the two thirds, you know, following along with him, man. Joining hand in hand. And just because you join hand in hand with the wicked, you, 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 that don't mean you're going to go unpunished, man. Scriptures talks about that. All right. Verse nine, the Lord knoweth, how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. And we coming up on that day of judgment, man, the day of doom, the day of Jacob's trouble. How in the hell are you talking about, you know, getting high and having a good time and kicking it and, you know, considering, I mean, we, we in a time of war, man, we in a time of war and we out here waging war, spiritually speaking, waging, we waging, we in a spiritual war. Right. Where we battle in, you know, uh, principalities and, and, and spiritual wickedness in high places. All right. There's a war between our spirit and our flesh. There's that war. We're out here uh, tearing down strongholds when we go out onto the highways and byways and, and teach. All right. And, and, and prophesy. You know. Again, we, 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 we battling against. The two thirds, spiritually speaking, of course, because we the, the the weapon we use is our weapons of warfare are not carnal, are not carnal. Okay, matter of fact, let's let's get that. So when we talk about when we talk about waging war out here, we're talking about in a spiritual sense. Um, the weapons, here's Second Corinthians. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse four, it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in Yahweh for pulling down strongholds. Right. Casting down arguments. Oh, wait a minute. I thought that sounded weird. That's the new King James. <laughs> it don't sound right unless it's King James. Man. In the, in the King James, it says casting down imaginations, right? Second uh, Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 again, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay, it says casting down imaginations, verse 5, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamasiach. It says Christ. But Christ is just a Greek word meaning anointed. Hamasiach, the Messiah. All right, Yahweh Shai. Right, verse 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. All right, so anyways, our, our the wars that we wage out here are spiritual in nature because nature, we're spiritual men. You know? 
But yeah, Lot was was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. He was surrounded by Moe's, man. He was surrounded by Moe's, transformers, degenerates, wickedness, worldliness, overindulgence. Same as it is, all those things, the same as it is over here today, man. There's no new thing under the sun. History definitely repeats itself. Those same spirits that Lot was uh, uh, having to deal with, okay, they're back in the reincarnation, man, or the regeneration, which you Christians, you know, don't understand that concept. But reincarnate, reincarnation is clearly taught all throughout the scriptures. Judgment don't make sense apart from reincarnation. I'll give you a small example, one that I've used for years. And, and uh, in Revelation 13, right, it's, it talks about he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. What is that? Revelation 13 and 10. We all know it, but let's let's read it for edification. Apart from reincarnation, judgment doesn't make sense, right? Revelation 13, chapter 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. So here's the example, right? The so-called founding fathers, you know, guys like George Washington, uh, Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, all of them had a hand in leading the children of Israel into captivity, right? Um, and they was all wicked you know, for, for you Christians out here thinking you living in a Christian country and America was founded on Christian principle, it wasn't. And then the Christians and the Israelites, by the way, um, it wasn't. that though, The men I just mentioned, okay, and there's a lot more of them, but I'm just using them as examples. They was all Freemasons, wizards, okay, war warlocks, demons, okay. You know, and they all died wealthy landowning uh, slave owners, man. Okay, so when... So when were they led into captivity? When was George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, when were those men ever led into captivity or killed with a sword? You see? So the Lord's bringing those men back. They, they back on the scene today. You know, they, part, they part of the system, man. They, they, they in. You know, they got a seat at the table, so to speak. Okay? And they're going to be shackled up and they're going to go right into slavery upon the Lord's return. They're going to be the first fruits. Of slavery, just like the, his servants, the prophets are going to be the first fruits of salvation. So, you know, it's, that's a different, you know, subject for a different lesson. But reincarnation is is, is biblical, man. It's taught all throughout the scripture. What about Yahweh Shai? Was Yahweh Shai's mind state? Was he, was he making mirth? Was he a man who was out all about making mirth when he was, when he came 2,000 years ago? And, and during his ministry, let's, let's read about him in Isaiah 53. Called a suffering servant, man. All right, Isaiah chapter 53 and, and verse 1. Right, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord, Lord Yahweh revealed to the elect, starting with the 144,000, and, and the men, women, and children, believers, they're out here believing what we're reporting. Okay? For he shall grow up. Before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. Talking about Yahweh Shai. All right, for you Old Testament only Israelites. Okay, y'all was y'all's way off too, but he said he had no form nor comeliness. And we, we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That was his life. Okay. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That don't sound like a, a good time. That don't like that don't sound like having fun in the truth, does it? Right? It says, and and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Okay, this world despises the men of the Lord. And then that's gonna be, you know, that's gonna be uh huge in these, I you know, especially as Society continues to collapse, man, and, and Jacob's trouble, you know, uh, comes, which we're in the very early stages of it right now. You know, our people are going to turn on us, man. Families, extended families, so-called friends, which you don't have no friends in this in this world outside of the men doing the work with you. Okay, so we fixing to feel that uh, 
persecution. Um, okay, surely, verse 4, he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Yahweh, and afflicted. Go down to verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yeah, and you know, that's another thing too. When you when you come into this truth and you start learning and growing, you realize how oppressed you really are. You know, just because you're not in a literal physical prison or a physical jail in that sense, you know, you're still debt slaves, man. We still debt slaves, we still own by the elites. You know, we have to work, we have to, you know. Damn, man, it'll make you mad, right? Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. You know, again, like I said, I wasn't going to, you know, regurgitate the, the precepts that the apostle brought out. But yeah, man, this, this 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 causes you to be, having this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is a beautiful gift, man. We have this gift in earthen vessels, but it'll make you fucking pissed off. Okay, because we see things for how they really are through the spirit. Okay. Um, it says he, he was oppressed, verse 7, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears is, is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. You know. So, yeah, that was his life as Yahweh Shai, Greek, being grief stricken, you know. Being sorrowful. I mean, we out here, you know, waging war through the spirit. You know, again. So, I don't understand how you can be, you know, talking about having fun in the truth. Let's see. Let's read about, uh, well, here, let's go to uh, Micah. Right, Micah 2, in verse 10, and, it's, and it reads, Arising and depart. Now, this is talking about detaching spiritually from the system, man, from, from, uh, from Babylon, from Esau, from America, okay? Detaching from her ways, man. You know, putting down, you know, these uh, false ways and ideologies, okay? Repenting, arising and depart, spiritually speaking. It says, for this is not your rest, see? Can't rest here. Female bosses. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Okay. Arising and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, all right? America is polluted. It's defiled. This place is disgusting. It says it, says it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. If you don't depart from this system and, and disconnect, all right, you're going to be destroyed, man. It says, even with a sword destruction, you're going to feel that fire, man. Okay, which is the second death, that lake of fire resulting from uh, those thermonuclear missiles that are on the way, along with the chariots blasting this place. You're going to be destroyed, man. So how, how, how can you talk about having fun, man? How can you talk about having fun? Hold on. I was reading about, I was reading... In Hebrews 11, was Moses a man who was concerned with having fun? Moses was in there, man. He was in the king's palace. He was in there with Pharaoh, you know? Now, granted, we all have lots to stand in, and, and it was set up from the foundation of the world that Moses was going to be a servant of the Lord, you know? But he was in there, man. He was around all that, all, all that opulence. You can look that word up. He was around all those riches, and look what he did. Uh, we all know the story, but let's read it, man. This is history. Okay, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Okay, choosing rather, okay, this is what he chose instead, right? Choosing rather, verse 25, to suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh. Okay, you got the ICBK out here dancing like they in the kingdom already at the 52nd annual ICBK Passover. <laughs> the apostle played some of that. You know, dancing, having a good time, thinking that everything's good. 
Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. What's sin? Sin is a transgression of the law. Okay? Esteeming the reproach of Hamasiach, verse 26, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Okay? Yeah, we not we not concerned with physical treasure on this side. It's going, it's going, everything's going to burn, man. Second Peter, the third chapter. All right? We're supposed to be seeking first the kingdom of Yahweh by Shemiah Hashai. And anyway, the real treasure on this side is this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Romans chapter 11, verse 33 tells you that. You know? For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward by faith. He forsook Egypt. You got to forsake this place, man. You know? Not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Right? So that was, that was Moses' testimony, man. He chose he chose to uh, suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh rather than enjoy what the all the riches that he was surrounded by and sin. Come on, man, having a good time, having fun, having fun. Nah, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, what is that? Uh, I think it's Hebrews uh, 13. Hold on. Let's see. 13. All right. Um, yeah. This uh, this is get right here. Yeah, he, uh, Hebrews, staying in the book of Hebrews, chapter thirteen and verse twelve. Wherefore, Yahweh Shai also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. There he goes again talking about his suffering. All right, we just read about a suffering servant, Isaiah fifty third chapter. Right, suffer without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Is it fun bearing the reproach of Yahweh Shai? What is what is re reproach? Bearing his reproach. I looked it up. Reproach. Bearing his. <laughs> if I can spell it. Reproach. All right. Um, all right. Reproach. To, to censure in terms of. A pro. Whoa. A pro. Opprobrium or contempt, to charge with a fault and severe language, to upbraid, to suggest blame for anything, all right, uh, to treat with scorn or contempt. Okay, shame, uh, reproaches a noun, shame, verse, uh, uh, verse, definition two, shame, infamy, infamy, disgrace. Number three, object of contempt, scorn, or derision. That would, uh, Number four, that which is the cause of shame or disgrace. So how how is bearing his reproach, okay, how is that, how do you um, get having fun in this society, having fun in the truth, if you have to bear his reproach? Come on, man. It's crazy. Verse 13, again, let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp. Unto who? Yahweh Shai. Without the camp, bearing his reproach. Verse 14, for here have we no continuing city, right? Because this city we're in, Babylon the Great, is about to be destroyed. All right, but we seek one to come. Again, they just, they just hanging out of that Passover like they was already in the kingdom. You know, and again, you ain't wicked. I mean, we're all look, we in the flesh. We're gonna have and, and the Lord's gonna give us little breaks here and there. Time and again, you know. But for the most part, our, our mind state is gonna be that of being vexed, okay, uh being pissed off, you know. And and all that. Um 
there was something in uh second address I wanted to get oh no hold on hold on a second Ezra 16 is what I want it's like yeah all right second Ezra 16 What the hell is this thing doing? All right, forgive me. I downloaded this new Bible app, and it's—I don't know. It's all—it's all jammed up. So I'll just go to the uh, online King James. Like you, was Ezra concerned with having fun? Now Ezra is back in the reincarnation again. Like I mentioned, and reincarnation is biblical. He's back here, man, prophesying, man, preaching, bringing it out, man. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm gonna get right to the point. In Second Ezra 16 and verse 17. Nah, let's start at 16. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 16. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. What's the final plague? You know, them nukes, man. You know, again along with the chariots. Okay, it says. Then he says. He pronounces, look at what he, he pronounces a curse on himself. Woe is me, verse 17, woe is me, All right? Woe goes into destruction, man, calamity, all right, misery. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days, all right? Verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, right? Great mornings, sorrow, man. Can we have fun in the truth? The beginning of sorrows and, and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? These men aren't believers, man. They don't believe these scriptures. Talking about these these men in the ISUPK making all these egregious statements. Okay, well, this is what the evil day is coming, man. Uh, verse nineteen. Hold on, let me read eighteen again. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings. The beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Right? Lean on Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh, He knew the answer. He's being rhetorical, the prophet. All right? Lean on Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh, We have a righteous tower to run into, the name of the Lord, man. Proverbs 18 and 10. Okay? Verse 19 Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish. Are sent as scourges for amendment. All right, well, I made the point. We in the beginning of sorrows, man, and and it's time of great mourning. So, you know, again, you know, being, you know, want to have fun in the truth, and that's that's an insane concept in this day, man. <laughs> that's an insane concept as of June the fourth, two thousand twenty-three. The whole all these prophecies come to pass. All right, so um. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video. Yeah, man, it, this this being in this walk it ain't you know ain't about having fun. That's not where you should you think you should be at all. All right. So Lord willing, you was edified through the Spirit. And with that, I want to say shalom.